Okay, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, in, in this session, I would like to give some uh, latest stories later on ARM platforms and uh, discuss about the uh, new technologies and how ARM can fit to the uh, storage, enterprise storage trend. Okay, so here's the topics that I will, I will cover for this session. Um, first is an overview of storage categories and solutions for enterprise workloads. And then what ARM has done and to match these different requirements for various use cases. And uh, in the later talk, we'll talk about the Ceph and the SPDG and uh, some kind of other acceleration libraries specifically. So for the enterprise storage overview, usually a storage uh, Usually, a storage system can be evaluated by uh, three factors, latency, IPS, and throughput. To increase the service levels to critical applications and data sets while reducing the overall cost of data storage, storage is always tied to different uh, tires. A tired storage architecture plays the uh, data in a hierarchy according to its business value. Tires are determined by performance and the cost of media, and data is ranked by the, uh, how often user access it. Generally, uh, the most important data is served from the fastest uh, storage media like RAM or NVMe SSDs, which typically is the most uh, expensive of system, and slower and uh, less expensive devices are for other workloads. So while storage is categorized to different tires according to the diverse workloads, but there are still some common underlying things to support these different user scenarios, from core technologies to file, system, to file systems. And also there are different high-level solutions to match these various requirements. So the core technology states that part of the uh, storage solution to achieve the requirements in terms of performance or capacity or other uh, user desired specifications. And two parts play key roles here. The first is algorithm, and the, the other is the, the way to access resources. To maintain the data uh, integrity on the media, the checksum is needed. And CRC and the hash, like uh, SHA, uh, uh, all other things are commonly used. And read and user coding uh, provide redundancy to protect your data and make, make your data more reliable. And to protect, to protect your data, encryption is also needed. And to save, save the space and bandwidth, uh, compression like uh, gzip or other things are uh, used. And the broom filters help to remove the duplications across the data blocks. For resource access, there are some uh, there are something receiving more and more attention. For NVMe, which use PCI Express to transfer data between the uh, fast flash storage and CPU, it greatly re reduces latency, removing communication between the uh, computer and the fast SSD storage as bottleneck, and thus resulting in a significant increase in IOPS. Fiber channel, which provides high-speed data transfer, and RDMA allows applications to bypass a software stack for, uh, net, for uh, network traffic processing. And there are many kinds, uh, different kinds of file systems. Each one of them has their different uh, structure and logic, and properties of speed, flexibility, security, size, and more. They have been designed to be used for specific applications. Among them, XT4, XFS, ZF, and BetaFS are widely used. And along with the uh, emerging acceleration technologies, to, uh, like the NVMe and the RDMA, there are also new uh, acceleration technologies like SPDK and DBDK. This technology bypasses the kernel Processing instead uh, using the polling in user mode 
to get to achieve high performance. And uh, about all these things, to bring all these things together, we got solutions to target for different uh, target markets like Lustre and uh, and HDFS for uh, data processing, and Minio and Rook for the virtualization and uh, uh, other things like uh, Cinder Swift for OpenStack. So, talk about trends. What would happen for the future? As flash technology is already much faster and less power hungry than hard drives, we are witnessing a stunning transformation in data storage as flash memory takes over an increasing percentage of data center workloads. And with its unique feature, uh, like a high performance and low, la la low latency, NVMe is getting more and more popular. And cloud storage providers are now rolling out NVMe-based uh, ser uh, server designs across their uh, data centers. And computer resources are separate from storage resources to get the right sizing and uh, independent scaling. This separation has been enabled data and, and uh, analytic leaders to overcome many uh, problems from the scalability and the, fle and the flexibility problems uh, interesting to the distributed cloud architectures. Software defines the storage, this, kind, this tech uh, separate the storage hardware from the software that manages it. It grants great uh, scalability, flexibility, and speed of configuration to, for the system deployment, de deployment. And this can be easily scaled to thousands of nodes. This technology has enabled the end users to at last scale the performance in a similar fashion to the capacity which is a, a truly big, a breakthrough for that, especially useful for the uh, database and uh, backup. So with all this uh, technology and trend, so how would uh, ARM fit for that? So ARM, uh, for ARM, ARM has provided several technologies like uh, SM, uh, SMD, like uh, uh, Neon and SVE and specific extensions like CRC, SHA, AES, and, and more to optimize these, these critical blo uh, blocks which have a significant impact to the storage performance. The effort for CRC, SHA, and AES has been done and upstream to uh, popular, various popular open source projects. And uh, the example is that uh, we have done uh, uh, CRC optimization in SEP, and later we port this uh, implementation to the other projects like SPDK and Scala DB and etc. And uh, at the meantime, we also see there are a lot of open source projects which have similar requirements for these core technologies. So we think it would be better if we can put all these optimizations into some kind of uh, central repo that people can use them either directly or use them as a reference. So that's the reason we are now contributing all our efforts to a, a repo called ICL. Uh, now we are, are contributing a complete uh, reference implementation set uh, to this, option, uh, to this uh, open source project. And uh, for status, read has been done. And uh, read has been done with Neon and uh, uh, merged, get it merged by upstream. And CRC and uh, multi-buffer uh, hash are in progress. And after that, AES will be our next target. Regarding resource access, both NVMe and RDMA have been evaluated on ARM servers. Uh, quite a few NVMe SSDs from different vendors have been validated on ARM. And uh, for the RDMA, we have tested the Minanox Connect X series on ARM. Uh, tested with both four kilobytes kernel page size and uh, 64 kilobytes kernel page size settings. So here is a sim simple micro benchmarks for CRC read and uh, SHA on ARM servers. So 
for CRC, we have three implementations. Uh, include one lookup table, four lookup table, and uh, PMOL-based implementations. Uh, and for these two uh, columns, they are uh, implement implementations uh, using specific CRC32 instructions. So we can see that uh, the PMO implementation can achieve about nine times uh, compared to the generic four types of implementation. And the specific uh, inst CRC instructions can achieve even 15 times faster. For the reads, we have run uh, two kinds of tests to get this benchmark, de uh, benchmark data. The warm test and cold test. The warm test uses eight kilobytes data block size and runs for uh, two million loops. And for the cold test, we use 32 megabytes uh, data blocks are, and uh, runs for 10,000 loops. And uh, as ARM has uh, uh, hardware instructions for the SHA and the SHA-256, so we can see that we got pretty high uh, throughput uh, achieved uh, compared to the SHA-384 uh, and the SHA-512. So for the file system, the system we have mentioned about X4, XFS, and ZFS, and BetaFS, both of, uh, for all of them, we have tested on ARM servers. And for the accelerations, SPDK has been uh, enabled and tested on ARM since, uh, I think, late uh, 2017, uh, with uh, contributions from uh, the partners like uh, uh, on the uh, patch with like uh, memory barrier, uh, virtual address space, and four kilobytes and 64 kilobytes kernel page size boards. Uh, uh, SPDK is now, uh, we can see that it's almost uh, fully working on ARM servers. And also we fixed uh, several UT unit test failures and uh, optimized CRC32 uh, and 32C computation in, um, in SPDK. And this we can, um, from a partner that a significant performance improvement has been observed uh, in the NVMe or fabric workloads. And for DBTK, uh, we also added 64 kernel page size support to the PCI VFI support uh, drivers and also update the IOMMU configuration setup for ARM server. And for NVMe, uh, we have uh, learned that uh, on quite a few partners have tested it with ARM servers. So that's also uh, functional, uh, I think, yeah, functional working. So let's take a, a close look at the SPDK. So SPDK means Storage Performance Development Kit. It's a set of tools and libraries to create a high performance, scalable user mode storage applications. A uh, SPDK NVMe device driver operates within user space, uses three techniques to minimize the software overhead. It use, address the uh, issue of uh, in, interrupt latency by instead pulling the storage device. And it bypass the user kernel context switch to furthermore minimize the processing latency. And it use lockless design to avoid the use of CPU cycles to synchronizing data between the threads. So from the architecture diagram, we can see that the, uh, at the top, uh, at the bottom, it states the uh, um, uh, different kinds of uh, storage device drivers. And above these drivers, SBDK defines a block layer to, uh, to export and operate with different uh, types of block storage. And on the top, there are storage protocols supported by SPDK. So here is a, a MAC benchmark um, we made for SPDK. The test system used a 2.5 gigahertz ARM server with 96 gigabytes RAM and one NVMe disk. And the FIO is used for the benchmark. Here we run, we have run a three test mode here. Random read, random write, and the random read write. The, config the configuration is listed at the bottom of the, this picture, uh, this slide. 
And uh, from the result, we can find that uh, SPDK can achieve up to 27 times our, uh, fast, uh, LPS and the bandwidth compared to the kernel NVMe drivers. So uh, move to solutions. Safe is a very, very uh, important one that we need to talk about there. Um, so Ceph, this uh, is a, a software uh, distributed storage uh, solutions which implements object storage on a single distributed computers, clusters, and uh, it provides three kinds of uh, services. Uh, they are uh, object storage, block storage, and file system. Uh, it's highly durable and uh, available and can easily scale from few nodes to thousands of, from 10 nodes maybe, to 10,000 nodes without a single point failure. So let's take a look at the uh, software architecture of Ceph. Uh, it has two backends at, at the bottom. They are Firestore and Blue Store. On the Firestore is a, a legacy approach to store uh, objects in Ceph. And the blue store is a new one designed for better performance. Above them, uh, that uh, sets Redos. Redos is a core service to manage safe clusters. Uh, a high-level application can access safe storage either by using uh, direct access through libredos or through services exported by safe like uh, uh, Redos Gateway. Uh, RBD and the CFFS. So for Ceph, it has been well supported on ARM. So for all main distros, they provide uh, ARM64 packages for, uh, with Ceph to help users to easily set up a Ceph cluster. And it's also officially supported in the container world. Ceph uh, has provided an ARM64 Docker image on Docker Hub. And the user can use the Rook to simplify and automate many setup and maintenance jobs for Ceph by taking advantage of, of Kubernetes as a distributed uh, platform. And uh, ARM64 is also supported by Rook. Um, we have done some bug fix features and improvements in Ceph, like CRC optimizations with ARM uh, CRC extensions and 64 kilo, uh, kilobytes uh, kernel page size support and also fix some bugs in the NVMe uh, device related uh, modules. And uh, we have tested uh, Ceph uh, with uh, SPDK and uh, RDMA accelerations uh, on ARM servers. Also for the RDMA, the uh, full coverage test is still in progress. But uh, it works with both 4 kilobytes and, six ki and 64 kilobytes third uh, kernel page settings. So uh, here I print the self uh, benchmark with different uh, one self using different accelerations. The first is about self uh, with SPDK uh, accelerators. Um, we can see that um, all these. Uh, benchmark scales very well while the cost uh, while the cost numbers increases, and we can also observe, observe that um, compared to the four kilobytes of kernel page size settings, uh, we can get some more improvement to use 64 kilobytes uh, page sizes, and the difference may range from uh, five percent to more than ten percent. And uh, looking to the future, several ideas for Ceph are listed here. Although RDMA acceleration has been added and validated with Ceph on ARM servers, but we still need some further investigation uh, to identify bottlenecks and uh, possible uh, optimizations. The second is to accelerate Ceph with NVMe or Fabric. The target is to use RDMA for underlying uh, network traffic and enable and test them 
with four kilobytes and six four kilobytes kernel page size and do the profiling to identify possible uh, optimizations. And for the Ceph community, they are trying to migrate Ceph OSD to a uh, C-star based to adopt to the incoming full flash-based storage era. So uh, for the C-star, it's a, a high-performance event-driven uh, framework. Uh, its uh, performance shows uh, good scaling with the cost while the cost increases. So uh, in such case, ARM can be a very good fit for that. And Ceph has been uh, dominated in OpenStack storage backends. And in OpenStack, there are two backends, two kinds of backends, block storage and uh, um, object storage. And for the OpenStack, we have achieved the 100 uh, pass rate to the interoperability test. And uh, as a container is, uh, and the whole world is moving to container, so Cola is, in, is introduced in to provide production-ready containers and the development tools for operating OpenStack clouds. And uh, we have introduced the Safe Blue Store OSD in Cola uh, and, uh, the, with a uh, blueprint, an improvement, uh, uh, several improvements and the side jobs. And all these things have been developed and uh, first verified on ARM servers. So here are some other solutions for popular storage solutions. Uh, which uh, have been valid on ARM. Um, so we can see that last year, for last year, we have valid um, with ZFS and uh, LDISC FS backend. For Gluster, we have built and uh, run unit test. And HDFS valid with uh, the big data software stack. And uh, for other things, we also valid and uh, identified possible optimizations in the future. So here, uh, let's summarize, look back the underlying technologies and the, all the new accelerators and the emerging solutions we have talked about. We can find that ARM support has been uh, widely adopted in various perspective storage tires. Those adoptions include not only basic function porting, but also specific optimizations uh, by using ARM unique features like uh, CRC extensions or other, or other specific extensions. And uh, these optimizations in core technology, especially for the algorithm, are extremely important for storage workloads as they can improve the whole performance quite a lot. An example we, I have uh, talked about is that the CRC32 optimizations in SBDK. With that optimization, we can uh, uh, achieve significant uh, performance improvement in the NVMe over fabric workloads. And the new technologies brings evolution in both software and hardware, and uh, various uh, user cases arise for data center to home users. So all these things bring the uh, divergent requirements for storage workloads. And in such workloads, ARM's uh, fit unique feature like flexibility, density, and power efficiency and scalable performance makes ARM a very good fit for this uh, quick changing world. So that uh, would be all for my part. So thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you all for coming to the session. <laughs>